Our East African region is now seven countries. It, has, it is a very big market for, for producers in Uganda and elsewhere. And uh, also, as we know, our country has now started becoming a surplus country in some products, like for instance, in sugar, in milk, in steel products, and so many things that we can actually sell around the ESC. And the good thing also that uh, when we are trading in ESC, we don't have a lot of uh, barriers that can stop us from trading there, like for instance, barriers regarding the standards. So the expectations within the region are the expectations like uh, they are in Uganda. It's, it's different like if you want to trade like with Europe where you have all these very high standard requirements. So this market is really a very good market and has been proved very much as a very good market for, the, for Ugandans. One, it is a market where we can sell value-added products, where we can sell manufactured products. And manufactured products are products that will give you better money you know, the, the value chain is longer, you know, so it, is, it can easily change uh, the, the lives of, of people trading within ESC. Now for us as private sector foundation, uh, one of the things when these markets opened, what we saw most especially after signing of the Africa country at free trade area, what we decided to do is to try to do a market scan, a market study, to understand the region. What does the region want? What products do they want? In what type of uh, quality, what standard do they expect? When, how, do you, how do we take these products to this area? So we, we did that market stand, scan and it's guiding us so much in terms of uh, guiding the business community in accessing these particular markets. Now the second thing is we now have decided and we are uh, conducting trade and investment missions within the region. We've done a trade and investment mission in Congo where we put together business people in Uganda who are interested to do business in Congo. We uh, match them up with the business people in Congo. So you, create, you do a business forum where business people can talk, can even exhibit their products. They can engage and negotiate contracts. They can create relationships so that they are able to start a trading and investment relationship. So this we've done in Congo, we've done in Tanzania, we've done in Kenya, we've done in with Somalia, um, and several countries so that people are able to start trading. And we are seeing very good signs. The market is there. Now, after actually getting that access, the next thing is what do we do to ensure that we increase the presence of products in Uganda in these markets. I would like to thank the business people who already have taken advantage of the opportunities and have their products in these various markets. But we can do so much more. We see mainly the small and medium enterprises as not having taken the opportunity yet to trade there. But there are issues that we need to resolve that can help them trade better in these communities. Uh, one of them, especially on the eastern part, uh, Congo, Sudan, and the rest, is there we do have logistics challenges. Transporting the goods, insuring the goods, accessing that, those, insur uh, those financial products, the money that you can use to trade in these countries. So we don't really have a, a, a well-developed uh, facilitation, facilitation services for us to trade in, the, in these countries. I'll give you a good example, especially for MSMEs. If you would like an MSME to trade effectively in Congo, now you'd expect that possibly they need to develop a distribution system in Congo, but they are too small to do that, really. Two, you expect them to have ready financial support, companies that can actually put money in them to ensure that they are able to trade there. They, they are not there. Thirdly, you'd expect that, for instance, if a company is uh, trading, uh, its products are perishable products, like majority of the products we can sell there, we don't have the value, the, the logistics, the cold, cold chain to support their trade there.
Now, it becomes so hard for these companies to sustain their trade there. But let me give you an example. If today, if I'm a small trader and I want to import from China, all right, there are companies that help me around China. Know where I can buy stand things, how I can pack them, how I can take them to a, a logistics company or um, a shipping company to bring those goods to Uganda, you know? So it is so easy. So meaning that the Chinese goods are very easy to get into Uganda here, you know? Because that thing is set up. Now, what if as a country we have a similar thing in the Congo side? It means it will be Uganda products going there. Now, how do we motivate companies like the companies that uh, help Ugandans to, to, to import from China? How do we motivate them to get into Congo so that they can now motivate SMEs to sell more products to the Congo, i.e. by establishing, for instance, warehouses, so that if I have products here, a number of cartons or a number of tons of products, when I send the goods, there is a warehouse where they will, I know that they will now be stored there until when I get uh, a buyer for them. Two, if it is a cold, a perishable product that will also be put there, we don't have those sorts of things. So that makes the trade very hard for the, for the people here. So one of the things that should happen in terms of uh, dealing with this challenge is for us as a country to organize ourselves, to organize our trade in this region. How do we put together the facilitative framework that can allow us trade effectively there? One, know what financial services are available to support the people who are trading there. Two, the warehouses. Three, the insurance companies that can help them as they trade there. Four, the legal and regulatory environment in the other region. We've had sometimes traders complain that crossing these borders are not actually very easy. Sometimes there are certain things that they keep on paying for which are not known, which are not standard, and this continues on affecting the trade. So let, it, let us organize as a country and then face this market as, as a country. They will benefit more than today where every company goes on their own and those that are not having the capabilities to go in the market are not able to go there. One thing about Kenya that it has developed its entire value chain substantially. If you look at the manufacturing sector is substantially well developed. If you look at the support service, the financial service, they are substantially well developed. So we know like for instance, uh, Kenyan banks have established in, in Congo, they have established in Sudan, you know. By doing that, then they are better able to support uh, the, the manufacturers to trade there. Look at the, 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 for the airlines. The airlines, they have a very well-developed uh, uh, airline with cargo capabilities and also is flying in these places. And therefore, goods can actually move. But also, they take also advantage of some of the infrastructure here in Uganda. They move their trucks through and then sell the goods there. So we cannot run away from the, from the fact that you need an ecosystem that is well-developed to support the trade there. I think that is what is giving Kenya the advantage that it has, um, unlike ourselves here. Uh, one thing that we, 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 we think that should be done uh, rather quickly is to establish financial packages, money that can help people who trade in the, in the East African uh, region. Uh, good enough today, much as we don't have banks that Ugandan banks that have established across, we have seen our, um, the banks that are trading in Uganda, and we want to thank them, under the Umbrella Association, the Uganda Bankers Association. They have put forward a fund worth one trillion shillings to support anybody who wants to trade within the region. So from the financial perspective, there are some moves there, and we hope government can also pick a leaf and expand this. Now, the second thing that we would like to see is we would like to see also the insurance services brought on board so that people can have something that protects them, that covers the risks of trading across borders, especially in our region, which is volatile. We need to see that. The third thing is we want to see that trade infrastructure 
in there. In addition to the roads that we need to ensure that they are there, in addition to the railways, the, the other trade infrastructure we are talking about is, for instance, having logistics centers where our goods can, can first be, uh, can land, and then they can be distributed across the country. So the logistics centers should be able to accommodate dry cargo, cargo that is not perishable. It should be able to accommodate cargo that is perishable. And uh, when we do that, then we'll have more people, more companies participating in the trade uh, within the region. I, I think we're a bit slow in terms of uh, building partnerships that can help us to trade. Uh, of course, our colleagues across are really doing it much better than ourselves. But I think the, the, the work has so far begun. I know very well, like today, that uh, there are companies. Uh, there is a company, a logistics company in Uganda that has partnered with the logistics company in Congo to ensure that we are able to try and make logistics much quicker and much favorable to those who are taking goods to Congo, but also to the goods that are coming from Congo to here. The other partnership that we'd like to see, like for instance in the banking sector, in the insurance sector, we want to see partnerships in the airlines, you know, so that we have better movement of goods and services within the region. So we need to, to unlock uh, what actually undermines our ability as a country, as country business people, from engaging in a partnerships that end up benefiting, deal with it, and then by doing it, we are able to benefit from those markets, just like our colleagues across are doing. Now, the biggest advantage that you can have as a country in a driving and export-led economy is one, the foreign exchange, the foreign exchange. Foreign exchange, you will get substantial amounts of foreign exchange and therefore the volatilities that you face because the exchange, the foreign exchange is not much, you will actually handle them. The second thing that you are expanding markets, you know, if you are producing for 43, 45 million Ugandans, you know, it's not the same as producing for 300 million people. If you're producing for 300 million people, you have bigger facilities, bigger companies, you're enjoying economies of scale, and you're becoming globally competitive. That is very important. Fourthly, you will be seeing our companies employing more and more people, you know, because of the scale at which they're operating. And because they're employing more and more people, you expect more taxes, you expect even better uh, social order because everybody is engaged in, in one activity or, or the other.